Okay, we'll start with the size 10. This is a standard nymph hook, barbless. What we need first is a little length of fine lead wire. So we'll just hold this on the hook shank like this and we'll wrap in tight turns. Depending on how much weight you want on this, you want about 10 or 15 wraps. So we just wrap this in. There are better ways of doing this but I shan't be showing you those right now because you need extra things. So we'll wrap those in then we'll put our fingers nails at each side and we'll push all these wraps together so they're nice and tight. We want to keep these under the thorax area of the hook. <clears throat> so I've got brown sheer tying thread and we'll attach this just in front of the lead wire. We'll go back up to it and we'll make a little stopper and then we fold this end over the lead wire and we go over in a few gentle wraps and back again not too tight and then we come in at the rear of the lead wire and we'll put in another stopper this will stop the lead wire going forward or back then we can remove that and we'll make our way back to about the hook point and we need our hairs mask now on the cheeks at the side of the eye we have just under the ears we have this long these long uh, mottled guard hairs we want a little bunch of this now we only need a little bunch and try and cut it as long as possible so when you've got the bunch cut out like that you see there's some super long hairs we just take hold of those pull them out now when I'm doing this I have a little pot little plastic sushi soy sauce pot at the side and all the surplus hairs here that I pull out goes into this pot very useful for dubbing afterwards so now we hold the tips and we just very gently pull out all that fluffy under fur we don't want that in here so, but you have to grip the tips tightly so you don't pull those out all we want here is the tail so you can use a little comb as well just to loosen that hair and pull it out that'll do us so we want the tail now let's come in here too short that's due that's perfect we go up here we'll go over these ends don't worry about them being scruffy these are going to be covered and go back here that's excellent and what we need is some oval gold tinsel and we'll tie this in start at the lead wire and we'll go all the way back right into the tail base like so and if you've got a material clip on your vice you can just hang that out of the way then what we need to do is we pull a length off, we put our finger in and we make a dubbing loop. Now if you can see here the loop is open we need to close that because if you put materials in an open loop like that they'll fall out so what we do is we go over once with the tying thread like that close, close that loop and then we can go up and move our tying thread out the way. So we need a dubbing spinner and we put this on our loop and slide it down keeping the loop open all the time with your finger and then in my left hand I'll take some hairsier dubbing and keep it between my index finger and thumb so I can just pull off the amount I need each time 
place it in the loop. Now this dubbing loop needs to increase in density as it gets lower down here. So the amount of dubbing that goes in has to increase because it wants to get a larger taper. There we are, that will do it. So what I do now is I close the loop to keep the materials in position like that and then I can position them and pull them out if need be to distribute them better but that will do me and that's enough to cover that part. So what happens now is I lift my string and I'll spin my dubbing spinner clockwise and all that will spin up. Give it another spin, keep it nice and tight. Then what we can do is take a toothbrush and we can just pull out the loose stuff so it gets a really nice spiky dubbing. Now what we want to do is we want to wrap this anti-clockwise. So I have to move my tying thread forward and make quite a few wraps at the front like that. You'll see why. So, and now I can, if you don't have a rotary vise, you can just wrap it as you would anything else, but then you have to wrap it under and over like this in touching turns, but with the help of a rotary vise, it makes things much easier. And you see my bobbin is unwinding now and going further down. Uh, we want to do this so the body gets thicker towards the thorax. That's super. So what I can do now is rewind my tying thread back, catch in the dubbing loop a couple of times. We don't want that coming loose and then we go back again on it. Then I can remove the dubbing loop and spinner. <coughs> and that's the scruffy body you should have. So again, what you can do here now is just brush out anything that was loose. And all this can go back in the dubbing box for the next hairs here. That's excellent. <coughs> so now See, since we've wound our dubbing for this anti-clockwise, this way, what we're going to do now is wind to strengthen the body, is wind our gold tinsel clockwise. And depending on the size of fly that you're tying, you can determine how many turns of rib you need. So then I can come back up here tie off that rib there and remove that. That's looking good. And we go back up here and now we need some pheasant tail. So what we need to do here again we need a, quite a decent bunch here and we need to level the tips out. So we pull all these fibres 90 degrees from the feather shaft, like so. We hold the tips and then we'll cut those off. Like that. And then we've got all the tips more or less level at the front. Now the legs should be perhaps a, you can determine this yourself but they should be about the length of the abdomen. So about there we'll move our tying thread forward to there and we'll just tuck these in behind the hook eye 
and then we'll go back keeping all the pheasant tail fibres better if I turn it that way on top of the hook shank and when we get to about there we want to spread these fibres out so we can have a nice wide wing case at the rear that will get smaller as it gets to the front so we'll come up here and work our way back right into the abdomen like that that's looking good and then what we need is another dubbing loop so once again over the back over the loop to bring the ends together and then we can wind forward and rest our tying thread there with the legs put our dubbing spinner on the loop again now the thorax being a little thicker we need a little bit more dubbing in this so we'll just fill our loop again and I think that will do us so in there spin our dubbing spinner again spin that up now we don't have to wrap this anti-clockwise now because we don't have a supporting rib that's counter wrapped so we want to wrap this forward the thorax is larger than the abdomen so we don't brush it out and we come forward back those get to there we'll tie it off two or three times over then fold it back two or three times back and we can remove the dubbing spinner that's looking good pull the fibers out to the sides check the wing case beautiful now what we want to do is we want to go forward I'll turn my vice this way we want to separate the legs about half and half like that push them back like so then we can go into the eye spin our tying thread again give it a flat profile and then we can start at the hook eye, work our way back, hold the legs in position, just check those, those are perfect. And we can take our pheasant tail, run a comb through it to line up the fibres. Make sure that you get all the legs out. Tie any of those down. Just separate those fibres again. There we are, that's perfect. And then we go over, pull the fibres together so we get that broad wing case at the back getting thinner to a point as we get to the hook eye. We'll make two or three turns there, a little distance from the hook eye. Then we can come in under and take our whip finisher and just put one in there for safety's sake. Then we can take our wing case fibres and cut them off at a slight angle. pull everything back start at the hook eye again go up over the fibers put your way up so they don't slip excellent take our whip finisher and put one in there
two in there. And remove that. And what we can do is we see we've got a few fibres at the front there. So we just take a lighter. It's a bit high. And we just carefully singe away those hairs of your fibres. I've got one sticking through the wing case there, I don't want a long white one, there we go. Take a drop of varnish. And there we have it, the finished hair's ear nymph. If you enjoy the videos, please like, share, subscribe and thanks for watching.